who's doing a stream again so so happy oh my god what is this so <laughs> happy 2021 and and welcome to my first twitch stream of the year yay so uh so uh so yeah so just so you know to start the year in a high fashion you know new year new me i sliced i sliced a part of my thumb away <laughs> so i can't really draw well <laughs> until it kind of grows back but it's okay because you don't need to be an expert at drawing to do everything in harmony so i thought that today i'd show you how to handle your background and your 3d space and your 3d models and your 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 z space in general so that's what we're going to do today because because it's fun so yeah, as the chat says, if you have any questions or any things you want to share about the subject we're talking about, feel free to do so in the chat and, and we'll answer it. If I don't answer, um, 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 it'll come. So <laughs> just be patient. So um, yeah, my name is Mel. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. So here's what I have in store for you today. And if we don't have time to do everything, it's okay. I'll just come back another day and we can talk about it. So we're going to talk about this Z space in general. So this includes multiplane and 3D integration for like reference and stuff. I'm not going to talk about 3D rendering because that's another story. But if it's something that interests you, tell us in the chat and we're going to do something about it. So yeah. 3D ba uh, um, background like that, that you can set in Z space. Also going to talk about actual 3D assets that you can use to draw on. So I will use my amazing skills of <laughs> drawing without a thumb to show you um, that you can actually have, for example, a dog sitting, oops, sitting on this. Bench. Whoop. That's my dog. Yay. Um, on top of a 3D model. And the fun thing is that even if it's a 3D model, it's not just an image. I'll be able to kind of move it around and do some cool inception stuff. Na, 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 na. And to draw on top of it. And even if you want to animate one part of the model, you can also do that. So pretty flexible and pretty fun. Pretty, pretty fun. And hello from friends. Yay. Hello, Julius from friends. That's fun. Yay. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do um, um, today. So let's dive in. <laughs> uh, before I go with the whole 3D uh, shenanigans here. I'm going to start with something more simple. But the good thing is that even though it's simple, because it's mostly 2D images, it's kind of the same concept as the 3D ones. So, so, <laughs> two of animation has become Blender. Well, I don't know who's become who, but it's been a, a while since you can use 3D models in Harmony. Um, so I'm happy that this is new information to some of you because then you'll be able to learn and grow better and stuff. So that's cool. All right, so I have this background that I didn't draw or paint. Uh, just saying, because I can't do backgrounds to save my life. Um, and that background is separated into many pieces, as you can see here. So it's like a kind of a rig, but it's a background. But um, that's another way you can do backgrounds. You can have them separated in many little pieces. Like that. And what I did is I imported that background, I gave it peg, and what I'll be able to do with you in a moment is separate it into a different depth in my scene. So I'm just going to do it quick to show you the final result. And after that, we're going to do it together and have fun. You see how much time it takes? It's really quick. And that's what we're going to be able to do after. So instead of having to fake this multiplane or parallax effect, you can really just set your backgrounds in space. And then once you have a camera, 
camera, where are you? There you go. Once you have a camera and you put a peg on it and you kind of go forward with that camera, uh, you'll be able to see a very cool 3D effect. Whoa, this is so immersive. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, so you can zoom in, and it's very intuitive. And one thing you can even do is set your peg to 3D and be able to do something like this. Whoa. To uh, really look as if your background was 3D, but we're not having 3D yet. It's just images. But we can still get a lot of out of these images. So. The reason why I'm starting with 2D is that once you, once you do a project, you have to ask yourself, do I really need full 3D in that scene or in that project? Because, uh, you know, even in, in popular 3D movies, thinking like um, um, How to Train Your Dragon or all these very popular movie, uh, if you watch the making of, a lot of the sets are actually not 3D. They'll have matte painting, matte painting in English, which are that would be like highly rendered version of this and they just move this 2D image around and it looks 3D at a fraction of the cost. So always ask yourself, do I really need 3D? Because it's always, it takes more people to work it or can I just do it in 3D, uh, in 2D first? So that's something you can do. And the reason why it actually, it looks kind of 3D when I zoom in is because it actually is. So if I go to my perspective view, and I move around, oops, <laughs> I move around, you see that it's actually, my background is in 3D. Whoa! So, the, uh, Harmony is a 2D software, but it has a 3D universe inside it, like a 3D um, plane, which is why you can work with 3D models. Where is my 3D model? There it is. Coming. So that's why you're able to work into 3D models. And when you draw, you can have these drawings that are 2D. Um, so that's why I'm able to draw. It's because my 2D drawing will be on a plane that will be on top of my 3D one. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to remove everything and we're going to start from scratch. Goodbye, background. Yay. All right, so first, I don't need my camera either. So I'm going to just import a background because even just for background import, there's a lot of things to say. So file, import, and I'm going to go get a background. Um, yeah, okay, so I have my PSD. If I open it in Photoshop, you'll see that all the layers are actually layers in Photoshop. Uh, but it doesn't have to be Photoshop. You can It can be most uh, painting software. Uh, as long as you can save it as a PSD file, you can open it into multiple uh, files like that. So, um, oops. I meant to open it in Harmony, not in Photoshop. No. <laughs> um, well, whatever. At least we have it. So. You see, so in my in Photoshop, that's what my drawing, my background looks like. So there's many layers, and some. And if I put some blending nodes, some blending modes on these layer, such as multiply, overlay, and stuff, these would also follow, which is something I'm going to show you later as well. So you know, uh, I know that my layers uh, are separated, so I'll be able to import it just like that into Harmony. So instead of exporting all these images as one. You can just import it as a whole file, go open, and then you just go here. So for the layers, do I want just one layer or do I want multiple layers? Well, I want multiple layers because I want it to be um, separated into multiple layers. Um, I will keep it as original bitmap because what this does is that I'll be able to import my blending node if I have some. Blending mode, I mean, if I have some. Um, and also, if I save my file, my my PSD, if I save it and then I close Harmony, I open it again, it's going to go and get the newly updated PSD. So you don't need to re-import. You just need to edit and save, which is kind of cool. Um, 
So usually for, for full-blown background, we use the original bitmap. If it was a prop that you were importing, such as like a, a PNG prop that a character is going to interact with and move, uh, it's better to use, uh, it's sometimes better to do it as in to boom bitmap drawing. This is because you have some more power with it, with like the nodes and the peg and the tools. But, you know, typically for backgrounds and multiplanes, we're going to do it as original bitmap. And uh, I mean, for the rest, it depends on your file, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I'll press uh, OK, and then I'll get another window because uh, I'm importing a file with multiple layers. So what do I want to do with that? Do I want to just import it as one layer and flatten all my files or stuff? So there's a lot of stuff you can do with that. I'll just, um, for backgrounds, usually you can import individual layers. Because if you do groups as layer, if you have multiple layers in a group, instead of importing many layers, it's going to take all the Photoshop layers and transform them as frames. So uh, if you had a character with a reference and had many mouth inside the same layers, then you could import that kind of character as groups. So then your group would contain multiple frames. But if it's a background, use it as individual layers. I'll press OK, and then I'll get my background. Um, import it in many different layers. All right, and then I, I will just put them side by side like this because I prefer them to be side by side. And you have your background, but that's not over because remember, if you want to move an image in harmony, you need to put a peg on it. You're not supposed to animate a image straight. So I know that in my preferences, I cannot put keyframes on my drawings, but in case that you don't have that or you're not sure, when you import a background or anything, always make sure that you select these drawings and you go to the set properties on many layers and that you actually turn the animate using animation tool at off so that you don't put keyframes on your backgrounds. Because the last thing that you want is to put a keyframe on your background image and on the peg and that both of them fight and nobody has fun. So I'll press OK like that. And then since they're already selected, you just have to press on Control Shift P to get all your pigs. And since they're already selected again, you can press on Control P to unite them. So that's usually what I do for backgrounds. Um, I select what I want. I go with like Control Shift P and Control P. That's like my recipe to success. And then everything has its own little peg and you'll be able to work magic with it. Yay. All right, so the reason why we have a peg here is not so much to animate it because you won't you'll never animate a background moving like that or rarely. The reason why we like to have a peg is that then in your timeline you can just collapse it and it's look and it looks neat and organized. Because if I didn't have it, it would take so much room in my timeline all the time to have my background showing up there. So that's why we prefer to have a peg on top of it, just so that it's easier to organize in your timeline and in your um, node view. It's like a full circle. You have your top peg and your bottom composite, and everyone is happy. Um, note that my composite is set to bitmap. For a multiplane, it's important to set it to pass through. Um, because otherwise, if your composite is set to bitmap, it will only register the Z depth of the left most port. So if you try to have a character in sandwich between two layers, it's not going to work. If we have some time, I'm going to go over that uh, later. But just for now, just know that for multiplane, you have to get a pass through the composite. All right. Don't forget, if you have some questions, feel free to ask them. Yay. Um, all right, and now we need to actually create our multiplane because if I go to my perspective, I don't see anything in depth. It's just one image. I need to bring things forward and backward, right? So to do that, that's when the top or side view comes in. Um, 
just to show you how it's done, I'm going to have my perspective and my camera showing up at the same time, but it's really not necessary once you get used to it. It's really just for education purposes. So in my camera view, I'm going to show you the background and in my perspective, view, I'm going to um, put it into like 45 degree angle just so that you see what's going on with that. And then I like I like to have my nose view showing as well so that I can interact with my background more easily. And then I'm going to go get my last view and it's the top view. You can also get the side view, but I don't know why. I just like the top view better. I like to see my things from the top rather than from the side, but you know, they're the same. So top view, you can have your backgrounds here on the side. And one thing that is really important is that in the top view, um, you really see the zero axis. So these lines are like the zero zero of your universe. If you create a new layer, this is where it's going to be. So this is why, and this is really, really important. If you work in a studio or if you want to do that for yourself, like multiplayer and stuff, always remember that when you're where your characters are interacting, always keep them at the zero space. Because otherwise, if your floor is too much near the camera and you want to create another layer, then you have to also move that new layer. And it's a bit annoying. So usually, we call that line ground zero, and the plane where your character are going to act, like this floor, needs to stay at ground zero. You don't, you don't push it forward or backward, you leave it there. And actually in that scene, I see that my floor and this should kind of stay at the same Z depth. So for these two things, I will actually, like Lindsay says, daisy chain them and I'll, you, and I'll unite them under the same peg just so that when I move this, both my planes move. Like maybe it was separated so that you can put an effect on the pavement, but not the ground. But in terms of depth, they're at the same place. So I'm going to unite them under the same peg. There you go. Um, and now I'm ready to do my multiplane. So to do the multiplane, of course, you have some pegs on your uh, background. And I'm going to take these peg and I'm going to bring them forward if they're in front of my ground. And I'm going to bring them backward if they're behind my ground. OK, and when I say in front and behind, I mean in the top view, you see here, this is your camera and what and the triangle is what your camera sees. So if I take my background and I and I push it to the side. It's not in my triangle, so I don't see it. It needs to be inside the triangle to see it. OK, and now. This is my camera. So everything that is in this part of the triangle is in front. Everything that is in the wider part is behind. All right. So, um, hey, animatoonings. Hello. Um, all right. So now if I want to take do my multiplane, I'll just take my OL, my overlay layer. And the first reflex that people would have is to take the layer and bring it forward right? Because it needs to be in front. So they would take maybe their transform tool or their translate tool and push it forward. But what this does is it will make your layer actually bigger because it is getting near the camera, which is not optimal because then you lose the beautiful composition you had. So if you're in other compositing software, um, you need to kind of bring them forward, but you also need to like scale them down. And it's a bit annoying to do so because it's like math that you have to do. Like you have to kind of divide the something by something else. And I'm not good at math, okay? I draw. <laughs> so instead of having the asshole of like making it bigger or smaller and then changing where it is, Harmony has a tool made for that, and it's called the Maintain Size Tool. And if you go here, I see the Maintain Size Tool up there, and, it's, and it says, keeps visual scales in camera view as you move elements in Z-axis. 
inside our top views. Like it's it's a tool that was basically meant to make your life easier. So if I click on this and I bring my my piece forward and backward, you see it doesn't budge inside my camera view. But we can clearly see it moving into the 3D space. Whoa, it's getting to be so small. Look at it being so small. So if it's small, it's because it's very near the camera. And Harmony is, is making the calculations for you, like the math I was talking about. It's going to shrink your background element as, as it comes closer to the camera. And OK, I, I won't bring it too close because that's crazy. Um, just like that should be enough. And then just to show you, I'm going to do the same, but with my background card. So I'm going to take my background element here. And I will push it backward. And you see it's going to start to get bigger and bigger as I bring it backward. But it's not getting bigger inside my camera view. It's really just how are you doing the calculations for you? Where is it now? It's there. So big and small, big and small. All right, so now that I have my further back in my uh, very close OLs, I'm just going to do the rest of my background, OK? So I'm actually going to start over with these. <laughs> and oh, and by the way, I'm on my first frame, so it's kind of important to do that on your first frame. Yeah, people, you seem to like that feature. And I've worked into compositing in other softwares in different shows. And I know that this was a very annoying process, having to like fake the 3D depth of your background. So having it be automatic like that and actually logical because it is 3D and not having to scale and move is so fun. Um, it makes compositing a whole lot easier for that part of the job. So don't be afraid to try it. It's really, really if, uh, Really, really fun. And OK, so I'm going to reset it all just to show you how fast it can be. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one by one of these pegs, and I'm just going to push them and pull them into my Z space while always keeping my main ground grounded. Like I'm not bringing this backward or forward. And you know, the fun thing is that you can also, uh, if I take this part, you can bring it backward or forward, but like you see, it doesn't grow big or small. So fun. OK, I'm going to start with start with my OL. I'm going to bring it forward. This one, I'll also bring it forward, but less so than the other, so that I have a cool depth in this. Actually, I think this one is more near than this one. So I'll 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 do the, the opposite. So I'm going to bring this one close and this one a bit further. Then my main ground is not moving. My mountains, I need to push them a little bit behind. They're disappearing, but it's fine. It's just because they're now behind the castle, but it's OK. I'm going to take the castle. I'm going to bring it backward, take my clouds, bring them back, and then take my layer and bring it back as well. Usually people will start with the back and then go forward so that they don't have things hiding things, but that's not how my brain works. And and that's life. So. <laughs> Um, so then you have your little multiplane and it took like five seconds to do and it's so cute. After that, to create a camera movement, it's as easy as creating yourself a camera, giving it a peg. For camera motion, I tend to prefer to have 3D path peg rather than separate, just because it's easier to do a path. If you have a question on the path, we have documentations on it and stuff so you can check that out later because today is not the subject but 3d paths are great because it allows you to navigate your trajectory very easily so i'm going to click on my camera peg okay, or click on my camera to show it to you uh, my camera peg to show uh, how to move it in my timeline not in my timeline in my camera view and by the way, in my camera view, I activated activated my camera mask. It's that button that is button that is in the bottom left to move your background like that uh, to to have your screen get dark if you want to see just what your camera sees. OK, and then to have your camera movements, you just have to take your camera peg, 
take your transform tool and if you shrink the rectangle, you will zoom in. And if you make it wider, you're going to zoom out. Um, of course, you can also pivot it if you want to do some crazy cool things, but uh, that's not what I'm going to do right now. And let's say that I want to zoom in and look at this castle ground here. That's kind of cool. Oh crap, I was on my first layer. <laughs> I need to be on my oh, on a different frame. So on my first frame, I'll have my basic movement and I'll we'll put a keyframe there. And I'm going to go to like frame 40 and now I'm going to make my zoom in to my beautiful thing. And don't go too far because you're going to know that you cheated. <laughs> so always keep in mind that you don't want to see, you only want to see your background, not the gray area of harmony, because that's weird. Um, you could always fix it by having your green background be a bit bigger, but you know, I will keep within my limits because that's what I was, that's what the background was designed for. Okay, so let's say that this is my zoom in. Amazing. Oh no, there's a tension. <gasps> no, 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 no tensions. No, it's full of tensions. I hate tensions. Okay, that's perfect. And now I'll just anim uh, activate the tween and I'll have a beautiful camera move. Whoa. <laughs> and yeah, you can, of course, use the drop down menu here to give it a bit more of a better timing. But uh, yeah, so that's the basic of the multiplane. Did you learn something new today? I hope so. And it's not even over because there's more things you can do with that as well. Um, because now I'm just using 2D pegs. So I'm moving things in Z space, but you can also use a 3D peg. So that's what I'm going to use with my camera here. I'll focus on what my camera sees. I'm going to go here, go to my peg, enable 3D. And you see, it's going to change how my peg looks. So instead, in a 2D peg, you can just edit, oops, you can just edit the square thingy. But in a 3D peg, you have this cool 3D controller. And it looks like a cross that is red and green, but it's actually a, oops, it's actually a 3D circle, allowing you to move around uh, your scene like that. Okay, so if I zoom in, you can even have your camera kind of plunge forward or backward or forward like that. So it's even more immersive. So I'm going to redo the movement with my 3D peg now. So I'm going to start a little bit as a down shot. That's how it's called. I'm losing my English. And then on frame 30, I will zoom in. And I'm going to plunge forward a little bit and you'll see, of course, if you cheated too much, it shows that you're using 3D, uh, 2D assets, but you can kind of move around and explore your background like that. And that's really great to move within your space. Kind of gives you that uh, cool adventure time um, <laughs> kind of intro motion. Yeah. That seems cool. Whoa, this is so 3D, wow. <laughs> and yeah, so how do you like that, people? <laughs> oh, and let's say that I wanted to have something like a lizard drawn on that piece. That's where the pegs come in because people, sometimes I walk around and I talk with artists and they're like, using peg is stupid. I don't want to put a peg. I just want to move my background directly because putting a peg is 0.5 seconds, uh, 0.1 second, and it's too long. But it's really useful to put a peg because then if I make a new drawing layer and I call that the lizard <laughs> with the U, I can just give it a composite like that. And that's my OL layer. If I attach that layer to this one, you can even give it its own peg, by the way. 
in case you wanted to go behind and in front of that. And if I want to draw a lizard, or actually I'm going to draw a stick bug because stick bug are my new passion. <laughs> and if that's my stick bug, um, it can show up on top of my background and it's going to stay there for my whole um, scene. I'm organized, so I'm renaming my layers. Um, yeah, so now if I have my camera movement, my stick bug will stay there as well. <laughs> and if you want to animate the stick bug, um, you can do so. I'm going to give it a very quality animation. Um, just brace yourself. Yeah, that's a party bug. Okay, I love it. So that's my beautiful animation. I'll just copy and paste it throughout all my scene. Uh, paste cycle forever. There you go. And now my bug will be moving in my scene. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fun thing. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> it's sticking around. And and the fun thing is that now since I have one bug animation and I want to have it elsewhere in my background, you just have to figure out which peg you need. So if I want my bug to also be on that tree, I can just use a copy or an apply peg transformation of that bug and also place it within my new background. So I'm going to give it a peg, attach it here. So that then I can take my bug and I'm going to, oh, that's not the right pivot point. There you go. And I'm going to put it on the tree. <laughs> Just have a great old time. <gasps> no, not the tree. I'm going to put that on the castle. That's way cooler. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And after that, we're going to jump to 3D. So that's the part that's the the time to get a glass of water or a snack if you want because i'm just doing 3d uh, just doing a stick bug madness at the moment so he's having a great old time on that castle and uh, yeah so now if i make my camera movement my character will still be on there there we go Yay! <laughs> and yes, yeah, so that was part one of that amazing Twitch stream. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that's what goes in my brain sometimes. <laughs> and uh, oh, I forgot one thing. I keep forgetting things that are cool. Um, so now it's attached to a background, but you can also attach things to your camera. So if you wanted to have kind of a cool eagle or flying stick bug flying around your scene, you could also have a layer attached to your camera. Just make sure that it shows up in your node view. Attached to your camera. And now if this was my eagle, because if I don't attach it to my camera, um, I'm going to draw the most beautiful eagle. I'm getting great at drawing with all the sum. With all the thumb. So that's my beautiful bird. If I wanted to fly across my scene, um, if I don't attach it to my camera, oops. Yeah, if I don't attach it to my camera, when my camera is going to move in my scene, uh, it's, it's going to outfly the bird <laughs> and it looks weird. But if you attach it to your camera, uh, it's going to follow your camera. Whoa. But now the problem is that if it's attached to my camera, it's standing at ground zero. So it's going to go inside my background. So if you do that, just make sure to give it a peg. And you go on your first frame and you're going to maintain size that peg 
as close as you can to your camera so that it doesn't um, oops so that it doesn't um, break with your oops with your um, camera so I'm gonna put a peg and I'm gonna maintain size that peg close to my camera and then I'm gonna uh, maybe scale it up a little bit because you need to do that before you do your camera move okay I'm just doing things backward but then you see it's gonna stay close to your camera so that you can have a 2d layer moving into your 3d space um, and then you consider that as a flat layer so you can animate your bird doing whatever you want it's just that I can't animate really well but like if you wanted to flap its wing or something have to animate it just like if there was no 3d backgrounds under it and etc so yay okay, so i think that's enough nonsense uh we're gonna go to do some 3d movement yay and the part i just showed you about uh, attaching something to your camera and maintain sizing it close to your camera this is important when you do 3d work all right, so let's jump to 3D. I'm saving this scene because it's hilarious. I'm going to make a GIF out of that um, stick bug party. So just one last time. <laughs> I think I'm going to put like 10 of them. I thought it would be fun. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this. Well, I'll just unconnect it because I want to keep it for later. Okay. Let's talk about 3D because a, a lot of things I hear when artists want to use 3D is that sometimes it's a bit hard because 3D is not something they're comfortable with. And it's totally understandable. So I'm going to try to make it a bit easier for all of you to do. So I have this thing that I already imported just to show you quickly. Uh, where is it? Hmm. Oh, right. I deleted it. I'm sorry. So I'm going to start over. It's fine. Um, I'm going to go to my file, get a 3D model as easy as file import 3d model if you don't know what we can you can and can't import we have a documentation about it that you can check out so i'm just going to go get that little card here and you have the choice to convert it to 2d but i'm going to show you that later not now it's coming it's coming yeah, so I have my beautiful uh, 3D card. If you want to move it, of course, I always, like I said before, put a peg on it. Don't move the model directly. Put a peg on it. And since it's a 3D object, always go to your prefer your layer properties and enable your 3D peg so that you can actually move your piece in 3D. Whoa. But you see, it imported your model at ground zero so if you leave it there you can like scale it but if it stays there and you try to draw and of course when you draw your drawing is going to go through your model yeah because your drawing is here so it's cutting your model so if i take my model and i push it back Oops, push it back. It's going to be behind my drawing and now it's going to be in front. So that's one thing that can be confusing because then you, you can't really maintain size a background because it's not an image. It does something weird. So typically when we use 3D as reference, we're, we're not going to maintain size the background. We're going to maintain size the drawing. So my background you can kind of try and be careful and like prepare and always leave it behind the ground zero if you want. And then you can like move it around and stuff. 
uh, without problem. But usually when I work with 3D reference, I don't really care that much about this <laughs> ground zero thing. And um, because, because when you use 3D as reference, ultimately you're going to get rid of the reference. So it's not that much of a problem. Um, but that's it. You have two choices. So either you keep your back or your 3D model always behind this uh, part. And then you just do your business uh, however you want. Or you can have your drawing. And I'm going to take my file. Let make a little happy face. And I'm going to take my file. And what I'm going to do is put a peg on it. And I'll maintain size that layer very close to what my camera sees. So then even if my background is in front of the ground zero thingy, my drawing is always in front because I maintain sized it near what my camera sees. And since it's maintain sized, when, my, when I'm done tracing my animation, like if I wanted to trace that um, 3D background thing, There's so many details. That's why we use 3D ref. Okay, so if I'm done tracing it, um, if I remove the peg, my drawing doesn't change size so that I can have my drawing standing at the zero plane because since it's maintained sized, it doesn't change the size of it like that. So then I can use the maintain size when I want to trace, and then I just remove it when I'm done, and I want to actually start my animation. So that's usually what I do for 3D models uh, like that, if I want to trace them. Um, this way you can have like your 3D model imported in your scene. And if you want to animate them, maybe not the card, I'm going to animate something else, <laughs> because the card is not really supposed to move. Oh, but before I do that, I just want to show you no, actually, I'm going to do the movement first. Um, I'm going to go get my little sword thing. Mm -hmm. And let's say you do a show about like pirates and they have swords and, and the swords, they need to move around. Sometimes it's hard to know how a sword looks in different angles. So you can manipulate your sword like that and try to find a good angle and then you can you can trace it, right? And if you want to animate it, it's as easy as just putting a keyframe. Then you're moving your peg just like you would with any cutout asset. And yeah, so that will be my beautiful animation. Woo! <laughs> I actually liked, I did this once for kind of an intro sequence that was kind of very, very, kind of like a James Bond movie when they have like esoteric little shapes moving around and you can kind of trace it and it looks cool. I did that for a school project. We had to like rotoscope something that was kind of cool. So we could draw over. But like, like I shown before, if you have a drawing layer and you try to draw on top of it, and sometimes it's going to be over, sometimes it's going to be under, and it's a bit annoying. So usually I do my 3D animation here. But I just maintain size my drawing layer as close as I can to, for my camera. And then just draw it over my sword. Time is running out, so I'm going very quick, but you get the picture, so. Uh, so then, yeah, you would have your thing following, and it's really fun to do. Because uh, it's easy. And then when I'm done, I'll just get to get rid of my, like, unconnect my 3D, uh, deactivate my peg, and now my animation is standing on the zero, and you have it there. 
so super great it's cool for cars it's cool for swords for anything that is going 3d that you want to trace over to get some references okay so i hope it's clear And now just to show you another thing about 3D, because I've I have I used to be a 3D animator, so I'm perfectly at ease animating in 3D. Okay, because uh, I studied 3, 2D animation on paper, then I graduated and went to study 3D. And I worked in 3D for like a year, two years, I think. And then I went back to 2D because that's what I love most, but I'm still very at ease in 3D animation. So 3D is easy. Uh, but it's not the case for everyone, and that's understandable because it takes a lot of time to know it. So if 3D is not your thing, you can also import something as a 2D image. So I'm going to go uh, get my 3D models, and I'm going to go get our... We have a cool Tokyo model. Tokyo model, where is it? Uh, there you go. Tokyo's treated card. That should do it. That's a very huge model, though. And I'm going to convert it to 2D. So this is exactly like if you were opening your model in like Google SketchUp or another 3D software and Maya or something, and you would take a screen, screen cap and copy paste it in the software. So then you could have your, your, your landscape or your, your model. And, you, and it gives you this very, very clean and easy interface that you can like zoom in and out. You can move about. That's a very heavy model. I should have taken something else. <laughs> and um, you can kind of move. Oh, yeah, you can move around your model like that. Um, and since you can use the numbers, it's a lot easier to manage than moving it in your scene. And then you have this. Once you're satisfied with the angle, you can render it. To, oh, you can even change the focal. This is very important for, especially for like backgrounds and stuff, to be able to change the focal. Um, to fit maybe a camera uh, um, angle that you had, uh, then you can render it to your scene. And what it's going to give you is an image, so then you don't have to worry about the depth of your scene. Um, you can't animate your camera going through it in 3D, but it's like a very, uh, it gives you like a, a PNG, uh, it gives you like a flat image. So if I go to my Perspective, where are you? Perspective, there you are. It's really just an image. So then it's easier to just trace over it with another drawing because if the drawing is in front of your 3D background, then it's going to show on the front. So you can have like a, if you want Godzilla to appear and walk on the ground. I want to draw, but I can't. If that's his big, big lizard leg. And he walks in the scene. <laughs> um, it's way more, it's way easier. And if you're not satisfied or if so, if your supervisor comes, he's like, mm, I'm not sure about this angle. You can be like, yeah, no biggie. I'm just going to right click on my background, update my model position. And then it's going to take a while because it's a big model. <laughs> I should have taken something else. And you'll be able to change the angle of your thing. Like that. Then I can change the angle. And maybe get it to look a bit more up because it's way more dramatic. And then you render it to your scene. And then your angle changed. Of course, you don't do that once your animation is over. You do that before animating, right? Do it when you do your key poses or your rough. And not, I mean, not your rough, like your your layout. But then it's easy for you to just choose um, the angle um, that you want. Yay! Um, the last thing I want to say about... Oh, and by the way, if you mix that with our guide tools, then you can even use this as a base and just start to draw. Um, and then just start to draw your, your 
background on top by using our perspective guides, you can kind of make them match your scene and just start to draw. So that's cool. But I'm not a background person, so I'm not going to waste your time today. But if you're a background person, feel free to mix and match the guides and the thing. It's a bit more useful in Storyboard Pro, but yeah. If you want to animate the BG, which is the last part. Oh, and we have 10 minutes. That's perfect. That's what I calculated. Uh, if you want to animate the background, uh, you need to do it in full 3D. This is just for a quick reference and to make it easy for people who hate 3D or like are not used to it. But instead, if I had the whole CD um, imported in my scene, import 3D models, I'm just going to get the street and not convert it to 2D. It's coming. I hear my computer screaming at the moment. <laughs> you can do it. Yeah, OK, good. Note, though, that if you're using models of such scale, you need a good machine for it. Like I have a 3D computer, so it's fine. But uh, the um, imported 2D is also important because if you have a um, computer that is less um, less um, strong, you importing to 2D is lighter because it's an image instead of the whole 3D model. So, like when I'm on my little laptop, I usually use uh, convert to 2D. But when I'm on my tower PC, I don't mind handling 3D backgrounds because that's what it's made for. And then you just give it a 3D peg. Do, 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 do. And you can just move your background. I'm gonna, I, I like to activate my mask here because it's a bit easier to see. And then you can just uh, put your background in it. It's fun to have your 3D um, top view like that because it helps. And if you want to do something crazy like Inception, in, Inception style and you want to have your, um, your, your 3D model move around like that, you can. I'm uh, just going to put a keyframe here. I put a keyframe here. It's really just animating cutout. You just put keyframes and you animate the things. Whoa. That's going to be crazy, OK? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so yo, da -da 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 and that's the 3D. So you can animate your background itself, which is a bit more rare. Usually we keep the background in place and we just animate the camera moving within it with a 3D peg. That's usually the case. It's like we rarely move the three. We usually move just the camera and we have it go through the background. And then you can you can maintain size your animation on front of your camera to have it um, go inside the camera. OK, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing something. Um, da -da 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 -da. And then you could have on another layer, uh, your character could be like running to do some parkour, <laughs> because parkour is really cool. Um, I don't want to get my guides. I don't care about my guides. I don't want a guide. And then you could have your character kind of running. But oh, yeah, you need to maintain size at it first. Uh, maintain size. Where's my top view? Top view. Gonna maintain size that in front of my camera. Yay! And then you can just animate your character running around the city and uh, have a fun time doing that. Um, last thing I want to show you before we leave. These things go by so fast. This is so sad. Um, is that I have my 3D background. And if I want to move one element, like if I don't like where this thing is, <laughs> you can also take that thing and move it. So for now, all I can do is move my whole background. But if I use a node called sub node animation, this one, and I just go and snug it between the background and the composite. And usually we'll give a composite to this own background so that it can do its own things in the corner like that. And if I give it a sub node animation node, of course, you don't 
do that for a big, big city like that. Usually you do it like for the little cart I had or a little sword or something. But it will give you like an, if you're familiar with Maya, it's going to give you an outliner thing. 3D graph, right? Yeah, so it's going to give you like an outliner with all the pieces of your background. So if you want to move this thing, you just click on it and it's going to say like, hey, this is a sidewalk sign one key. And if you go to your timeline, it's going to show you the subnode animation here. And if you want to put keyframes on it, you can put a keyframe on uh, oops, on that thing here. So I have my sidewalk sign key here. If I wanted to spin around, I can make it spin around. It's going to be gorgeous. Look at that, guys. What the kid? Wait, I'm going <laughs> to remove my camera movement. And you see it's spinning in, almost spinning in place. <laughs> Oops, I removed my keyframe. No. So yeah, it's going to spin around <laughs> for absolutely no reason. It's a magic sign. Whoa. So yeah, so that's how you animate stuff. But this is a bit more in depth. And if you're not familiar with 3D, it might not be your jam. But um, just to finish this, does anyone else have other questions? We can go overboard for some two or three minutes, so don't hesitate. I'm going to go get my cart just to show you this in a more practical way. Come on. I'm going to take my cart. I'm going to give it a sub node animation as well. Here, and when you have the sub node, that's when you have access to this outliner thingy. Um, so if I want to, let me just position this. Enable 3D. Whoop, okay, like this. I can make it bigger so everyone can see. And let's say your character, uh, or let's say like you want uh, this to sway in the wind a little bit, like this part. Then instead of importing five different models, you can just use this model, but have the subnode animation in. And I'm going to click on get my transform tool, click on this thing. So you, so you get your transform tool, you click on the model, then you click on the piece you want to move, and you just put a keyframe on it. And then in your subnode animation, in your timeline, you go here, you're going to see the lantern one thingy. And then you can have it sway in the wind like that if I want to have it move like that. I'm exa exaggerating it so that you can actually see it on the smaller screen. But uh, yes, yeah, so you could do that. You can also like animate this box moving. So it's going to be a magic thing. <laughs> um, <doo> -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> it's flying off, guys. And uh, <laughs> I mean, zero gravity, right? So it's just flying off to space in a direction that is out of control, guys. Bye. So, so yeah, I hope that this was useful and that I didn't break all of your brains too much and that you're going to have fun. All right, so the last one minute or two of questions. And after that, I guess we'll be on our way. So is everybody all right? Um, let me just go up there. Oh, and by the way, Mick Wheel. Uh, a peg is basically just something that allows you to move pieces around. So that just to show you, if I remove the peg, my 3D model would go back in place. So the peg is really just a movement like that. Okay. 
So yeah, I hope you had fun and that this is going to give you so many cool, cool ideas. Because when I don't know what to, what to draw and I don't have inspiration, tracing over a 3D animation is really fun. So I hope you have a great old time and I'll see you again someday soon. So uh, yeah, bye bye. <laughs>